Hello friends. Today we will discuss the general properties of a proteins. We know that the proteins are one of the biomolecules. In this video, we will discuss its occurrence, its definition and important physical properties. Friends, there are four biomolecules which are responsible for the construction and functioning of the body of the organisms. Mainly carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and nucleic acids. Now in our diet, where do we get carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and minerals? Here we can see that this is a pure Maharashtrian Thali. Uh, here we will get uh, chapati, poli, then this is a paneer, this is a kadi and various atoms are there. Now out of these, what is the source of protein? What do you think? Yes, this is a puran poli and puran poli is said to be a complete food because it consists of all the biomolecules which are required for our healthy nutrition. The carbohydrates are contributed by the wheat flour. The lipids are the ghee or the oil. The proteins are nothing but the basin or the puran which is incorporated in the poli and the minerals are given by the jaggery. So in this way, the puran poli is the complete diet. In addition, we can get proteins from the legumes, from the milk, milk products and in case of animal sources, we will get proteins from the meat, fish and milk. We know that all enzymes are proteins and the living organisms cannot work without protein. Therefore, proteins are the fundamental biomolecules which are found in all living organisms without any exception. The proteins are made up by amino acids which are linked together by a peptide bond. And therefore, amino acids are said to be the building blocks of protein. Now, this question is asked a number of times. So, the building block of proteins are nothing but amino acids. Now, what are general sources of the proteins? Now, generally, we get proteins from the soybean. These, these are the examples of legume plants. Soybean, botanically, it is a glycine max. Chickpea, that is the Caesar aretinum red gram, beans, etc. And from animal sources, the proteins are present in meat, fish, crab, milk, etc. So these are the general sources of proteins and we take them regularly in our diet. The definition is that the proteins are high molecular weight biomolecules. They are made up of one or more chains of amino acids which are linked together by a peptide bond. So amino acids are building blocks and they are connected by peptide bond. Proteins are formed either by a single chain of amino acid or many chains of amino acids. Structurally, the amino acid is composed of the alpha carbon which is linked to four different groups. One of the groups is amino group NH2 and the other important functional group is carboxyl group, COOH. The third side is connected with hydrogen and on fourth side we get various side chains. These amino acids, they interact with each other. During their interaction, the carboxylic group of one amino acid react with amino group of another amino acid. In this process, the OH from carboxylic group reacts with the hydrogen from amino group and they liberates H2O. The carbon C double bond O connects with NH and this bond specifically is called as a peptide bond. So in this way the peptide bond is formed in between two amino acids and one water molecule is released. As the water molecule is released this process is also called as condensation process. Right? So in condensation, two or more molecules, they connect with each other by liberation of water molecules. Now when many such amino acids are connected with each other, they will form a chain of amino acids. And this chain is nothing but a polypeptide chain. 
In this chain, one end will have an H2 group, so this is amino terminus, whereas other end with C double bond O OH carboxylic group. And this end is called as carboxylic terminus, C terminus, and on other side we have N terminus. This structure of amino acid is also called as rattlesnake model. Here the COOH forms the branches of this rattle and amino group forms the tail of this rattle. Now let us discuss the physical properties of proteins. The pure proteins, they are colorless and tasteless. We have seen that in carbohydrates, monosaccharides, the sugars, they are sweet in taste. But in case of proteins, they are tasteless. Similarly, pure forms are colorless. They are homogeneous structures, may be crystalline in form. About the shape, protein shows a variety of shapes. Broadly, they can be divided in two groups as spherical shaped proteins and fibrillar proteins. For example, the globular proteins are the spherical proteins and there are various examples of fibrillar proteins like as the muscle proteins. The molecular weight of protein molecule is very high. It ranges from 5 into 10 raised to 3 up to 1 into 10 raised to 6 Daltons. So we can imagine the size of proteins. Now structurally, the primary structure which we have discussed that there is a chain of amino acids having N terminus and C terminus. So this chain is nothing but the primary structure of amino acid. Now this is a simple structure where number of amino acids are linked in a specific sequence is called as primary structure of protein. So primary structure includes number of amino acids. For example, this polypeptide has 10 amino acids and a specific sequence of amino acid in which sequence they are linked with each other. So this sequence also matters. Now sometimes this primary structure folds upon itself by forming a hydrogen bond. This folding may be formation of a spiral structure which is called as alpha helix or it may fold upon itself to form parallel sheets. This structure is called as beta plated sheets and the helical structure is called as alpha helix. So these two structures are secondary structures. In tertiary structure, in addition to hydrogen bond, various other bonds are also involved. For example, there may be a disulfide bond between cysteine and cysteine. There may be Van der Waals reactions. There may be ionic uh, interactions. So in this way, various interactions are responsible for formation of 3D model of the protein. This structure is called as a tertiary structure. And when more than one polypeptide of tertiary structure interact with each other to form a protein, this structure is called as a quaternary structure. So quaternary structures will have more than one polypeptide chain. So in this way, the secondary, tertiary and quaternary structures gives a three-dimensional structure. This is called as configuration of protein. So this property is very important because in uh, chemical properties also, we have to deal with this three-dimensional structure. Next property is the solubility. Now protein shows variety of solubility. Some proteins are soluble in water, for example, the egg albumin or blood serum, they are soluble in water, whereas number of proteins are insoluble in water. For example, the keratin which is present in hair and nails, this keratin is insoluble in water. The solubility varies from water to organic solvents to alcohol up to concentrated mineral acids and alkalis. So here we can say that proteins shows variety in solubility property. The colloidal nature of protein can be seen when the proteins are dissolved in water. When they are added to the water, they show a colloidal structure. The proteins have also one more property which is the absorption of ultraviolet radiations. Actually, the amino acids which are present in that protein they are responsible for the absorption of UV radiations. 
but this property can be used for quantitative estimation of proteins so absorption of uv is used for determination of amount of protein in a given sample next property is denaturation just we have discussed in the structure of protein that the three dimensional structure of protein is formed by various chemical interactions it includes covalent bonds hydrogen bonds van der waal forces and ionic interactions now such a structure three dimensional structure get denatured when these proteins are exposed to various factors like as a heat change in temperature or change in ph so these two properties are very important as all enzymes are proteins and so in cell also the temperature and ph plays an important role in the functioning of the proteins the functioning of the enzymes the denaturation of protein may be caused by various factors and the three dimensional structure will get denatured now in this condition when the proteins are denatured they are inactive and they cannot perform their specific role if this particular condition is reversed that is the ph is again reversed to its normal or optimum ph then the denatured structure may get organized and e becomes it becomes renatured and now this form of protein or the enzyme becomes the active form so this is a physical property which is reversible in nature and the last property is that proteins are biologically active each protein has a specific role and this specific role is performed by that protein in its specific three dimensional configuration for example the protein antibodies they bind with a specific antigen whereas in structural proteins each protein performs a specific role in the cell so this is about the physical properties of proteins in next video we will discuss the chemical properties of the proteins and we will also discuss the significance of proteins thank you